Les Frank Injuries Definition Les Frank Injury is a tarsometatarsal fracture dislocation that involves the medial cuneiform and the base of the second metatarsal. The injury can be purely ligamentous or bony injury or combination. The metatarsals are usually dislocated dorsally and laterally. The condition can be missed and can result in major disability to the patient. The Liz Frank injury is a problematic injury and it can be missed. Some people think it's overlooked in about 20% of the time. Diastasis between the second metatarsal and the medial cuneiform occurs due to rupture of the Liz Frank ligament and this injury gives a better result if it is treated surgically. Important anatomy. The most important ligament between the medial cuneiform and the second metatarsal base is the Liz Frank ligament, which is called the oblique interosseous ligament. The plantar and dorsal oblique ligaments contribute some stability but not as good as the oblique interosseous ligament. The dorsal ligament is the weakest ligament and it is the one that will fail first. The osseous stability is provided by the Roman arch arrangement of the metatarsals. The Roman arch is seen in the coronal plane and you can see the importance of the second metatarsal. The Liz Frank ligament is between the medial cuneiform and the base of the second metatarsal. The Liz Frank ligament stabilizes the second metatarsal to maintain the midfoot arch. The second metatarsal will fit in the mortis, which is made by the medial cuneiform and the recessed middle cuneiform keystone configuration mechanism of injury the classic mechanism of Liz Frank injury is axial loading to a plantar flexed foot diagnosis is by clinical examination and by x-rays clinical signs the clinical signs will include plantar ecchymosis Tenderness over the Liz Frank joint, swelling on the dorsum of the foot over the Liz Frank area, and inability to walk with weight bearing. Clinically, if the patient cannot bear weight and the x ray appears negative and the patient has tenderness at the midfoot, then you do weight bearing x rays. X-rays. The second metatarsal base should be aligned with the middle cuneiform at the medial borders. And the fourth metatarsal base should be aligned with the cuboid bone at the medial borders in the oblique view. The dorsal and plantar aspect of the metatarsal should align with the cuneiform and cuboid on the lateral view. Any malalignment should raise the suspicion of less frank injury. Diastasis between the second metatarsal and the first metatarsal cuneiform complex more than 2 mm indicates an injury to the less frank joint. Look for avulsion fractures of the second metatarsal base. It's called flick fractures or flick sign. You will find it at the first intermetatarsal space. Sometimes the x-rays appear negative, but the clinical picture is suspicious for Liz Frank joint injury. You're going to do stress x-rays. There are many ways to do stress x-rays. 
The best way that's commonly used is weight-bearing x-rays compared to the other side, and that will detect any occult, subtle, less frank injury. Sometimes you may need to do the abduction stress x-ray, and that may cause a dynamic shift of the metatarsals. MRI could be used for occult injuries that's not obvious in the x-rays, especially after negative stress views. You may find less frank injury with cuboid compression fracture. It's called the nutcracker injury. This injury has the subtle, hidden, less frank injury. You got to make the diagnosis to treat it appropriately. Watch out if the patient has less frank injury and the patient is diabetic. The patient will have some swelling and minimal or no pain. And the patient has no history of trauma and the foot is swollen and warm with little tenderness. The x-ray will show less frank dislocation. This is really a neuropathic less frank injury, a charcoal joint. If you see fragmentation in the x-ray, that will make it easier. Treatment for non-displaced injury. Treatment will be non-surgical and it's used only when there is no displacement on weight bearing or stress views and no bony injury appear on the x-rays. So you will follow the patient and you will repeat the x-rays to detect any displacement of the metatarsals. You will keep the patient non-weight bearing for six weeks. This treatment is very rare and basically it deals with less frank ligament sprain. Decide, is it a purely ligamentous injury or bony injury or mixed? If you have a purely ligamentous injury, the recommended treatment will be early fusion of the first and second tarsometatarsal joints. If you do open reduction internal fixation for a purely ligamentous injury, you may have persistent pain and arthritis. The open reduction and the internal fixation resulted in a higher rate of secondary surgery and a lower functional outcome. Open reduction internal fixation is not recommended for purely ligamentous injury. But if you're going to do it because you have fractures, then you need to get an atomic reduction of the injury. If the injury is purely ligamentous, then fusion is better. If the patient is treated by open reduction and internal fixation, the most common complication is post-traumatic arthritis. It develops in about 25% of patients, and half these patients will go to fusion later on. So if the arthritis occurs, you will give the patient show modifications, insert, and anti-inflammatory medications first, and when that fails, you do fusion. What if the entire Liss Frank is injured? Then you will do open reduction and internal fixation of the first to the third tarsometatarsal joints and K-wire fixation of the fourth and the fifth tarsometatarsal joints. When you do the open reduction, you will do an atomic reduction and you're going to put the less frank screw from the medial cuneiform into the second metatarsal base. I use two screws. If you have diastasis between the medial and the middle cuneiform, then you will put transverse screw between them, which you remove at four months. In general, one and two and three tarsometatarsal joints have limited mobility and four and five tarsometatarsal joints are mobile. You will do rigid fixation for one and two and three and you will use K wires for four and five tarsometatarsal joints, which you remove after six weeks. So 
use screws for the medial column and K wires for the lateral column. Plate across the torso metatarsal joints can be used and it should be removed around three to six months. If you have purely ligamentous injury or the fracture is totally comminuted, then you will do open reduction and primary arthrodesis. Following close reduction and percutaneous K wire fixation, the patient may develop some optimal result because the reduction is not anatomic, and these male reductions will cause suboptimal functional result. Complication of Lis Frank injury, post traumatic arthritis and altered gait is common. The post traumatic arthritis is common but not always symptomatic. Check for compartment syndrome. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.